Okay, the 2020 Royal Rumble show is in the books, and, um, well, it wasn't dull. Uh, I, I'm still kind of mulling over my exact feelings on it. I do have some mixed bags about certain things, especially the two Rumbles, but uh, we'll get to that when we cover them. Um, also, they did acknowledge the, um, the unfortunate uh, tragedy with Kobe Bryant and the other victims of the helicopter crash, and... You know, it, uh, it's definitely cast a pall over uh, much of this Sunday, so, you know, definitely keep those people in your, uh, in your prayers. Um, so, uh, moving on to the show itself, we had two kickoff show matches. We uh, started off with Sheamus versus Chad Gable. I'm not calling him Shorty G. Um, early on, uh, they definitely played up the size disadvantage. Uh, Gable went up for a single-A takedown, Sheamus blocked it. Uh, Gable tried to, you know, ring out to an arm ringer. Uh, Sheamus blocked that, threw Gable to the ground. Eventually, uh, Gable did manage to uh, hit a crossbody that sent Sheamus out of the ring. Um, at one point, something happened that made uh, Gable's ear just bleed. I mean, it was really bleeding. Like, this wasn't like, oh, a little cut and a little drops. Like, no, his whole ear turned completely red. It was just so, uh, it was that bad a gash. Um, Sheamus has definitely adapted his style a bit more. He's not so much high impact anymore. He's doing a bit more of the uh, the catch as catch can joint manipulation stuff. He was prying apart uh, Gable's fingers. He was stomping on the hands repeatedly. Uh, Gable came back eventually in a drop kick. He had his uh, rolling, pay no, I don't forget what it's called, uh, the sort of forward somersault kick. Uh, he had a swinging DDT uh, followed with a moonsault. Uh, he had a rolling German suplex. But then uh, Sheamus hit a, uh, an inverted stun gun on the top rope. Uh, Gable managed to fight back, tried for an ankle lock, but Sheamus fought out of that and uh, fought, out of a crucifix, fought out of a crucifix pin and hit the bro kick for the three count of the victory. Uh, definitely made Sheamus look good. Like I said, I do kind of like Sheamus' new style. It's definitely um, not as high impact as he normally is. Um, he's been battling um, spinal problems. Uh, spinal and neck problems, so it was kind of surprising to see him take a, a German suplex like he did. But uh, so, thankfully, he didn't seem to show too many ill effects, and he did look really good in this. Um, overall, though, it's pre pretty much a typical kickoff show match. It wasn't spectacular, but it did a good, a good enough job. Okay, our next match is the United States Championship match, Andrade versus Humberto Carrillo. Uh, Definitely a lot of high spots in this match. Uh, Carrillo hit like a slingshot arm drag at one point. Uh, Carrillo went to the top rope for a new move, but Andrade pushed him off. He flew into the barricade. Andrade came back. He had a tornado death drop DDT. Uh, Zelina Vega really didn't uh, insert herself too much into this match. You would think she would have, but uh, not really. Um, I, maybe they were saving her for the Rumble a little bit, but uh, Carrillo came back. He had a spin kick and a rolling moonsault. He had an outside moonsault to the outside. Um, Eventually, uh, Carrillo went for another uh, another moonsault, but Andrade blocked it. His double knee splash. Carrillo did come back with a top rope perk and Rana, but then uh, he went for I think it was an O'Connell roll, but uh, Andrade managed to roll through that and get a roll up. Uh, didn't really grab the tights or anything other than that, but he just rolled them through for the pin, and that was it. Uh, kind of a look again. I wonder if there was maybe a miscommunication there because he should have had some type of leverage thing going on, but it didn't quite happen, so, uh, like, still, though, a decent enough match, but uh, the ending felt a little off. Okay, as we move on to the show proper, we opened up with the False Count Anywhere match between Roman Reigns and King Corbin. Uh, they dropped the loser had to eat dog food stipulation, so, um, I guess that was a good thing. I don't know, I mean, Russell Crap needs fodder for the gooker. Uh, anyway, uh, Right off the bat, uh, Reigns attacked Corbin's uh, 
throne carriers as they were coming down the uh, rampway. Uh, I will say this, the rumble set head, it was a, a really a kind of unique design. Um, you know, they didn't like have the ramp lead straight in like the side of the ring. It actually, the ring was kind of more diamond shaped at a diamond angle and the ramp actually came to the ring corner rather than uh, directly into the ring side. So it had kind of a unique setup there. Um, not, uh, so yeah, it definitely led to some unique visuals. Um, like I said, uh, they brought out in the crowd, uh, Corbin countered a Superman punch into a deep six. Uh, Corbin drilled Reigns with the ring bell, then he choke slammed him on the German announce table, then he choke slammed him through the uh, Spanish announce table. Uh, they brought him to the crowd again, and Dolph Ziggler uh, inserted himself in there as uh, Roman, uh, Reigns. They fought him in the international announce team area, and Reigns put it. Uh, Corbin through both the, I believe, Mandarin and possibly the French tables. Uh, it was not the Hindi one, I know that. Um, and then uh, that's when Dolph Ziggler inserted himself in and they jumped Reigns, uh, Rude and Ziggler, I mean, uh, Robert Rude and Dolph Ziggler uh, jumped Reigns and began insulting him and that brought the Usos out to even things up. Jay U Uso hit a uh, sick crossbody off of... Uh, one of the, uh, take, basically one of the seat stands up there, uh, basically took out Rude, Ziggler, and Ziggler. Uh, kind of funny that they were really only focusing on them, because at this point, um, they had some, uh, porta -johns, portable toilets, that were out, uh, I mean, they're in a baseball stadium, so you're seated in, like, the field level, if you're down on the, yeah, if you're down on the field level, you're not going to be hiking up, uh, you know, 40, uh, you know, 400 feet to go to the bathroom, so... It actually kind of made sense, and so Reigns tossed Corbin into one of the Porta Johns, uh, tipped the Porta John over, and uh, then they brawled towards the dugout, and Reigns hit a spear on top of the dugout for the three count and the victory. Uh, overall, pretty entertaining match. Had some good visuals, like I said, the the sick crossbody from uh, Jey Uso to the others. Um, definitely, definitely, uh, really well done. Really fun. Pretty entertaining. Uh, predictable that Reigns probably won, I guess. Hopefully that ends this feud because it's not been spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. So, end it on a high note. Okay, and we've now reached the Women's Royal Rumble match. Kind of came a little early. I kind of thought this would be a little bit later on the show than it was. But yeah, I mean, it was basically the second match on the proper show. So, uh, pretty unique there. Our first two entrants were Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair. Uh, after that came Molly Holly, then Nikki Cross, then Lana, then Mercedes Martinez, uh, and then Liv Morgan. And right off the bat, uh, Liv eliminated Lana, and then Lana pulled some chicanery to pull Liv Morgan out of it. So, uh, I, that's always a confusing elimination type for me. It's like, once you've been eliminated, you should not be able to eliminate anyone else. That, that rarely ever seems to make much sense. Um. No, it's something in my pocket there, sorry. Um, after that, we had Mandy Rose, then Candice LeRae, and as that happened, Bianca Belair eliminated Molly Holly. And uh, it looked like Alexa Bliss was going to toss out Mandy Rose, but then uh, Otis Dosevich of Heavy Machinery suddenly appeared, and he, because they're teasing a sort of Beauty and the Beast relationship with those two, and he basically caught uh, Mandy as she fell to the ring. She was on the ground and she landed on top of him, but not in like a really sexy way. It's more like her feet landed on his stomach. Um, so she was able to get back into the ring. Uh, then Sonya Deville came out. Uh, Sonya Deville eliminated Mercedes Martinez. Uh, Kyrie Sane was the next one out. Then Mia Yim. And as that happened, uh, Bella, Bianca Belair eliminated Nikki Cross, Sonya Deville. Uh, almost took out Randy Rose, knocked her back again into Otis's hands. But as that was happening, uh, Bianca Belair tossed Sonya Deville out, and she landed on top of both o uh, Otis and Mandy, and thus eliminated Mandy as well. Uh, then Dana Brooke came out. Uh, Belair eliminated Candice LeRae. Bliss eliminated Kyrie Sane. Uh, Tamina came out, and immediately Bianca Belair eliminated her. Dakota Kai came out, and Bliss eliminated Mia Yim. Chelsea Green, uh, the new NXT, the uh, next to uh, Mercedes Martinez, and uh, one more, which we'll get to, came out. Uh, she came out with uh, Rob Stone, sorry. And uh, as this happened, Green eliminated uh, Dakota Kai. 
but then Bliss eliminated Chelsea Green, and then uh, Bianca Belair took out both uh, Dana Brooke, and then she brawled with Alexa Bliss on the ring apron, and Alexa grabbed Bianca's hair, and Bianca basically pulled that back, sending uh, Bliss face first into the ring post, and that's how she got eliminated. Uh, you know, consider the fact um, Alexa Bliss missed a lot of time last year with a concussion problem. I don't know if it's such a good idea to have her crashing headfirst into anything. So that one was a little uh, cringy. Uh, as that happened, Charlotte came out. Uh, then the returning Naomi. Uh, she hasn't been in for a long time. Uh, a lot of shenanigans there. You could look that up online. Uh, then we had uh, Beth Phoenix as another surprise entrant. Then Tony Storm hit the ring as Charlotte eliminated Bianca Belair. Uh, Kelly Kelly returned. That's another surprise entrant. Then Sarah Logan uh, was immediately lo uh, eliminated by Charlotte, and then Kelly Kelly was as well. Uh, 23, we had Natalia. Then uh, Zia Lee. That's uh, the Chinese signee. Uh, Zelina Vega was in at 25. And then the other newest uh, NXT signee, Shotzi Blackheart, hit the ring at 26. Uh, 27, Carmella came in, and this is where it uh, looked like Naomi was going to be eliminated. She got pushed off of the top rope, but ran down, she, because she was in the corner with the ring steps, and she hit the ring steps and jumped to the ring barricade, then rode across the ring barricade, and then uh, stood on the announce tables to avoid elimination until a certain point, at which point she then took uh, one of the table placards and use that as a bridge to get back into the match. Uh, as that happened, uh, Tegan Knox came to the ring, and then Santina Morella. Not Santino Morella, Santina. Because we needed a WrestleMania 25 flashback for some reason. Uh, Santina <laughs> got caught between Natalia and uh, Beth Phoenix, and realized <laughs> that the jig was up, uh, pulled a <laughs> the, the Cobra Sock out, and cobra himself out of the rumble, or herself. <laughs> um, and then our final entrant was Shayna Baszler, and Baszler immediately eliminated uh, Zia Lee, Tegan Knox, Lena Vega, Shotzi Blackheart, Carmella, Tony Storm, and Naomi. And that left the final four of Beth Phoenix, Natalia, Charlotte Flair, and Shayna Baszler. Uh, basically, in a uh, role reversal from a couple of years ago, Beth Phoenix took her Natalia into being eliminated. Uh, Baszler then eliminated Phoenix. Uh, Baszler almost eliminated Flair, but then Flair got a head scissors on Baszler and pulled her out over the top rope to eliminate her. So Charlotte Flair wins the Women's Royal Rumble in 2020. She's going to WrestleMania to, in all likelihood, face Becky Lynch. And it really should have been Baszler. Um, this Rumble was not bad. It definitely had some great moments to it. It was definitely fun. Uh, good to see people like Molly, Molly Holly and Beth Phoenix again. Kelly Kelly, not so much. Good to see Naomi coming back. Uh, good representation from NXT in this, but still, it's like... Uh, again, I'm sure Charlotte and Becky could put on a great match at Mania. I'm not saying it's going to be bad, but... Again, I think everyone just really wanted to see Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch, especially since, you know, Ronda Rousey's not coming... It didn't make any appearances at this show at all, so... Again, it's hard to tell whether or not she's coming back. So, yeah. Uh, the Rumble, not bad, but I don't think it really reached its uh, true potential. Okay, so, you know, uh, in the previous video I talked about them dropping the gender distinctions with the championships? Well, apparently they're only doing that on NXT because they still called this one the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bailey and Lacey Evans. Uh, basically, Bailey spent much of the match taunting both the crowd, in particular, uh, Lacey Evans' daughter, uh, Summer. Uh, early on, Lacey managed to get some good licks in. She hit some knee drops. She hit a big elbow drop. Uh, Bailey, uh, basically feigned an injury to gain the upper hand. Again, Bailey taunted the crowd a lot. Uh, Lacey did come back and a drop to hold into the turnbuckle. Uh, she hit a slingshot drop kick. It actually looked really good, where, uh, she basically came up and she was on the outside of the ring and she slingshotted into the ring to hit the drop kick. Um, but then Bailey uh, got uh, lured uh, Lacey Evans outside the ring again, kind of teasing going after her daughter. Uh, Lacey Evans came back, looked like she was going to hit a big moonsault, but then Bailey got the knees up and then a quick roll up for the three count. Uh, basically, uh, she grabbed the tights in this case, so leverage pin. 
Um, uh, yeah, not a bad match, but it kind of reminded me last year of the uh, was it Ronda Rousey Sasha Banks match where again it wasn't bad, but it's just kind of like it screamed filler. Unfortunately, it's like you didn't think Bailey was going to lose, especially since they're apparently building towards Bailey Sasha finally. Uh, wonder how that's going to play into things, but yeah, like I said, it wasn't too terrible. Okay, our next match is the strap match for the Universal Championship, Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, this was not your ordinary strap match where you have, this isn't like the WWE ones where you have to drag your opponent to the four corners and touch the turnbuckles. In this case, it was uh, just a uh, pinfall or submission, which uh, is definitely an improvement. Um, they also finally got rid of that stupid red light whenever The Fiend has a match. Uh, it was, that was so refreshing. <laughs> um... Right off the bat, um, Wyatt put a strap, put the, I noticed when he put the strap on, boy that date sounds off, uh, when he put the leather strap around his wrist, he put it on the wrist that had the heel glove on it. I don't know if yeah, maybe that was meant to be symbolic, but I just kind of found that a little interesting. Uh, Brian got a few kicks in early on, but then uh, Wyatt avoided a suicide dive and threw Brian into the barricade, he tied Brian up in the tree, tree of woe and just began whipping him mercilessly with the strap. By the end of this match, Daniel Bryan's back looked like Daniel Bryan's chest when he was in the greatest Royal Rumble. That's how badly he was beaten with that thing. Um, Brian eventually fought back, he low bro he hit a low blow on Wyatt and DDT'd him onto the announce table. Uh, Brian hits some yes kicks, in, he would hit a yes kick and then he'd whip uh, Wyatt with the strap. Uh, Wyatt countered a flying knee into his sister Abigail, but Brian countered the mandible claw into a triangle choke and then fought through into the little bell lock. Brian came back and hit the flying knee, but then uh, Wyatt basically just no-sold it, locked on the mandible claw, and then hit a urinagi while doing the claw for the three count and the victory. Um, it was a better match than I think yeah, I was expecting. Um, I mean, both these guys are capable of doing that, so... It was at least good, again, not under that horrible red light. It, you know, it was, it was just enough to make it, they, could they maybe do it and have Bra uh, Daniel Bryan be the one to throw in the fiend finally, but, uh, you know, he just comes up short, but again, he doesn't lose a lot of credibility. You could tell he'd been beaten really hard. Both men had actually been beaten really hard. So, again, it did a good enough job telling the story. So, yeah, this was a very, very good match. Okay, our next match is the Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch versus Asuka. Uh, Kyrie Sane came out with Asuka, but she didn't really interject herself that much in the match. There was a couple of times she sort of distracted Becky, but that was about it. Uh, she definitely stayed on the outside. Um, it is funny because they talk about, oh, Becky Lynch has had this long, uninterrupted title reign, but they kind of forget that she was also a SmackDown champion and lost that to Charlotte um, <laughs> pretty much a month after that. Um... Uh, I mean, Kyrie Sane did sort of interfere a little bit. She actually was shouting instructions to the referee because Asuka would go for like a quick submission or a quick pin and she would say, hey, cover. Um, Asuka blocked a backslide and landed a... a oh no, she... A, sorry. Asuka blocked a baseball slide drop kick and landed a big kick to Becky's shoulder. Becky dodged a hip attack and locked on a top rope arm bar. Um, Asuka hit a swinging neck breaker through the ropes and then um, hit another kick after that. Becky countered another hip attack into a double knee strike to the back. Basically got the knees up to block it. Uh, Becky hit a front suplex off of the apron. Uh, Becky hit a missile drop kick off of the apron and followed that with a back exploder on the outside of the ring. Asuka came back, hit a big knee strike. Asuka hit a fisherman bomb. Um, they brawled for a bit on the ring, uh, on the uh, apron. Asuka finally hit the hip attack, which knocked Becky back into the ring post. Becky came back and hit an STO off the second rope. Uh, the funny thing is, as that was happening, the stream kind of froze briefly, so I had, so I didn't quite miss it. I had to catch the replay. Uh, Asuka came back, hit a bunch of kicks. Looked like Becky was knocked out. Uh, she managed to just catch the ref in time to avoid getting having the match be stopped, but. Uh, Asuka came back, hit a code breaker, locked on a cross arm breaker, then turned that into the Asuka lock, but Becky got to the ropes. Asuka came back and landed a huge roundhouse kick. But Becky fought out of another Asuka lock, lock attempt and hit a reverse DDT. Uh, 
at this point, Beck, uh, Asuka managed to push Becky into the ref enough that it looked like it was distract. He couldn't. He wasn't quite knocked out, but he was definitely uh, trying to regain himself. And Asuka went for the green miss, but uh, Becky kicked Asuka in the stomach. And so, basically, instead of spraying it out, she sprayed it up and back into her face, and that enabled uh, Becky to get the uh, disarm her onto Asuka, who tapped out. Uh, Really good match. Definitely probably the best non-Rumble match of the night. Maybe even best overall match of the night. I'll, I'll say that right now. Uh, they did a pretty good job of topping last year's match. And last year's match was great. So uh, definitely a really good storytelling match. <laughs> again, Asuka looked, obviously, it's not too much to make Asuka look credible. But again, it definitely looked like, ooh, could this maybe happen? Could we maybe get a title change here? We didn't, but it still came through, and I wouldn't be surprised if they wind up carrying this on through uh, at least the next month. So uh, at least we kind of got that looking forward to. Um, I believe there's going to be an Evolution show in March. I am not entirely sure, but yeah, uh, definitely match of the night. Okay, it's time for a main event, the Men's Royal Rumble match, and um, obviously Brock Lesnar entered number one. Number two was Elias, who was quickly eliminated. Then Eric Rowan, who was quickly eliminated. Then Robert Roode, who was quickly eliminated. Then John Morrison, who was quickly eliminated. He didn't even get his Miracle Escape eliminated, <laughs> so no. Uh, then up came Kofi Kingston, then Rey Mysterio, and then Big E. Uh, they at least managed to not get eliminated right away, and then they all got eliminated at the same time. Again, Kofi didn't even get his Miracle Escape. Uh, then Cesaro came out. He was quickly eliminated. Um, then Sheldon Benjamin came out. Uh, he and Brock actually embraced, you know, their old roommates from uh, University of Minnesota. Exactly. Kind of looked like maybe they were going to work together to say, hey, he was going, like, hey, you know, don't eliminate me right off the bat. You know, we can work together. And Brock just tossed him out. Um, Shinsuke Nakamura came in. Nakamura was eliminated. MVP came in. It was a surprise entrant. Uh, he, too, was eliminated right off the bat. Uh, then, finally, again, we got one who lasted a little bit, and that was Keith Lee. Uh, I don't think Brock had ever seen Keith Lee, because he generally seemed kind of surprised. Uh, Lee did get a couple of very impressive moves in, and then Braun Strowman came out, and he, it looked like he and Lee were going to start working together a little bit, but then they got into a fight, and Lesnar eliminated both of them to tie a Rumble record. Out next came Ricochet. Ricochet tried to do a top maneuver, but uh, Brock caught him. Didn't quite go into the F5 just yet. Uh, did a backbreaker, and I think hurt his knee a little bit when that happened. Because you know, he did the backbreaker, then like he was supposed to backbreaker, and then Ricochet was supposed to kind of fall down a little bit. But he hits the backbreaker, then kind of falls. Uh, Lesnar himself actually fell down, so he probably shouldn't do that move anymore. Uh, out next came Drew McIntyre, and McIntyre squared off with Lesnar a little bit. They got a couple of licks in, and then uh, Ricochet got a sneaky low blow on Lesnar, and that, en and that enabled uh, McIntyre to hit the Claymore and eliminate Lesnar. Uh, so that definitely saved this match, because the crowd, after about the fifth or sixth elimination, the crowd turned on this. Like, they were... Like, no, we're not going to sit here and watch Brock Lesnar mow down 28 guys and then lose to the 29th. <laughs> That's not good. Like, that was definitely, a, it looked like that was going to happen. It's like, once Lesnar was out, the rumble really, really did pick up. Um, Ricochet was eliminated next, but then The Miz came out. He was quickly eliminated by McIntyre. Then AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, Carl Anderson, and our next surprise entrant, Edge, came out. Uh, as that happened, uh, King Corbin came out, Styles with, AJ Styles was eliminated by Edge, Matt Riddle came out, Corbin immediately eliminated Riddle, Luke Gallows came out, uh, McIntyre eliminated Corbin, Randy Orton came out, we had a rated RKO reunion between him and Edge, uh, they eliminated uh, the remaining members of the OC, Roman Reigns came out, Reigns eliminated Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens came out at 27, uh, Aleister Black came out at 28, Samoa Joe came out in 29, and number 30 was Seth Rollins, who came out with his new, uh, excuse me, uh, Rollins came out with his new uh, entourage of AOP and Buddy Murphy, and uh, immediately uh, Rollins, or not Rollins, uh, Owens and Joe 
climbed through the ropes, not over the top, so they weren't eliminated to brawl with them. Uh, but eventually, they all basically went after everyone in the Rumble except Rollins because it just kind of stood there. And they tossed Orton over the announce table to injure him. They threw Reigns into the ring steps to injure him. They curb stomped uh, McIntyre and I think, not Edge, maybe it was Edge, I don't, they hit curb stomp on a couple of the guys too. Uh, Owens and Joe were eliminated and then uh, AOP helped Rollins eliminate Owens and then Murphy helped uh, Rollins eliminate Joe. But as that happened, suddenly, and one of the other eliminations, I can't think of who it was, uh, all sort of uh, Alistair Black, that's who it was, Rollins eliminated him. And they all started brawling with the AOP and uh, Buddy Murphy up the ramp. So Rollins lost his backup and then enabled uh, everyone to gang up on Rollins and McIntyre to get the elimination. And that left your final four of Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, Edge, and Randy Orton. Uh, and it looked like Edge and Orton again were working together. Orton feigned going for an RKO and tried to play off, say, hey, hey, wait, maybe you should wait and try to eliminate one of these guys first. And Edge grabbed Orton and threw him out. And as that happened, uh, Roman Reigns got up, fought with Edge. They both kind of, Edge, uh, I think Reigns first went over the top rope, but he didn't land on the floor. He ran, stayed on the apron. Edge got pulled over the top rope again, landed on the apron. They were both brawling. Uh, Reigns managed to get just enough of a lick to knock Edge off of the apron to eliminate him, and that left Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns as your last two. Reigns got into the ring, but he immediately caught a Claymore kick from Drew McIntyre, who tossed him over the top rope to eliminate him. Drew McIntyre has won the Royal Rumble. Um, definitely a good uh, winning Royal Rumble <laughs> moment. He's probably going to wind up, obviously because he eliminated Lesnar, he's probably going to go on to face Lesnar at Mania. Uh, Hopefully he can beat Lesnar again. Like, I hope you don't give him this shot just to have him lose. Like, if they do that, it's just going to be so bad. <laughs> like, give him his moment. He deserves it. Um, and, again, things, like I said, uh, this was really, <laughs> they called this a tale of two rumbles. I'd say, you know, this was a Royal Rumble show that had a rumble and a half in it because half of it was just, again, Brock Lesnar chucking guys out, which... Again, it's one of those, it started out fun, and then as it kept going and going, it got really tiresome. Like, it is cool, it is great that, again, McIntyre was the one who did it. It was nice that it was kind of right away, too, with an entering, but, again, it's like, ugh, this rumble, much like the women's one, I don't think really lived up to its full potential. It really could have been something special, and uh, it's still enjoyable, still great, still fun, but, yeah, it definitely uh, held a little bit back. Okay, so as for my thoughts on the show overall, I'm going to give the Royal Rumble 2020 probably a low B, like B minus. Let's, let's say that, B minus. Uh, again, uh, some really good matches. Obviously, the Raw Women's Championship match was good. The False God Anywhere match was good. The Universal Championship match was good. And, you know, the two Rumble matches, again, I don't think completely followed through on how good they were. Like I said, Baszler really should have won the Women's Rumble. I think that would have been a much better choice than Charlotte. Charlotte can have her moment in another day. Like, let Shayna have this one. It would have made way more sense. Uh, like I said, the SmackDown Women's Championship match just felt like filler. Then the other matches just, again, seemed to kind of be there to bolster the card up. Not, nothing more. Uh, it was nice. That there were rumors there was going to be a Braun Strowman, Shinsuke Nakamura Intercontinental Championship match, but... Uh, they wisely held off on that. They kept this down to an eight-match show, which I think really helped. It did go a little bit past 10 o'clock, so, again, if you're counting the two-hour kickoff show, it, it is six hours, but at least it, it it wasn't a terrible six hours. It wasn't like last year where we had, you know, a 35-minute championship match right after an hour-long rumble. So, again, at least we had that kind of going for it. Uh but, yeah, like I said, good, but definitely had room for a lot of improvement. 
Okay, so um, hopefully the next video up is going to be Gretel vs. Hansel. Uh, Gretel vs. Hansel. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'm still in a wrestling mode. Gretel and Hansel. Uh, the film's coming out. Uh, definitely looks creepy. Hopefully I'll be able to see that this weekend. Um, see you all next time. Hey guys, remember to check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions where you can help me expand my wrestling coverage to stuff beyond WWE, NXT, and the occasional AEW free show.